But I had the uh, I was working at a grocery store. It was called Plaza, and it was in Norwalk. And I'd been working there for about two years. And that um, the year uh, in 1992, they actually hired a gentleman by the name of Eric. Now Eric was probably more or less, you might say, a goofball. And what I want to emphasize is that you got to pick your friends very carefully. I know a lot of kids hear that all the time, but as you're going to find out, it can have some devastating circumstances. And in this case, um, Eric was kind of a goof off. He was the type of guy that liked to uh, just have fun at work. He didn't take it seriously. He showed up late, uh, manipulated as much as he could as to get out of work. And so, so and at that point, I was a pretty good employee, but he kind of drug me down a little bit. No, 1993, uh, basically, I was, it was a Friday evening of spring, and my parents had asked me to go to the store to pick up a few things. I wasn't working that night, so no problem. I decided to do it. And uh, when I went there, as soon as I walked in, I could see Eric was just finishing a transaction. And after he got done with that, he said, hey, Matt, come here real quick. So we went walking together, and I kind of assumed that, I, I guess, you know, you, you just know when somebody's up to something. So he goes, do me a favor. Here's a list. He goes, Here's, do me a favor. Pick up everything on this list for me and make sure you go through my line. Now, of course, I don't think, <laughs> it wasn't like I was oblivious to what was about to happen, but nonetheless, I didn't ask too many questions because that was definitely going to be my story as I had no idea what was going on. So I did as he instructed me to do. I went ahead and I, I, got, uh, I got all these items on the list and I went through his line as instructed. And as I kind of expected, he scanned about two or three items and just kind of forgot to uh, scan the rest. Well, at that point, again, my, this $50 bill we should have had actually only came out to less than 10 bucks. So at that point, I was about to pay. And here's the odd thing. I, I still don't understand this to this day, but one of the supervisors was very close by. Now, we were watching her very closely, of course, because obviously we, we want to make sure this, this whole plan gets executed without any flaws. And she was actually talking with somebody at the time, and she was both, I mean, she was stocking shelves, she was multi, she completely was not watching us at all. And before I knew it, she got, she, for whatever reason, turned around, came over to our register, grabbed the receipt, and checked it out. We'd been caught pretty much, and it was pretty obvious, because we both stood there with our faces were white, our jaws were dropped, and basically we didn't. <laughs> It, it, like I said, it, it body language could tell you the whole story. It was obvious that we were guilty, and basically she caught us red-handed. At that point, the supervisor said, okay, Eric, you need to go home, and Mr. Cassidy, you will be talking to the assistant manager, okay? And of course, we're both completely freaking out at this point. So Eric comes over to my house, and he, uh, we start talking to him, like, look, we gotta get our story straight here. We don't have rooms, we don't have room for mistakes, we don't have room for flaws here, okay? So what's the story? So we came up with this, obviously, this elaborate story. Well, throughout the week, as you can kind of imagine, before I got called in, our story kept changing when different people asked us what happened. And just to let you know, when you start off with one minor lie, it continues to grow and grow, and you find yourself covering it up and covering it up and covering it up. Also, in addition to that, I kind of realized that this was starting to get a little bit out of hand, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to go down for this, thinking about me only. So I went there and talked to the manager, and I did exactly. So with Eric, I was very clear that we're in this together no matter what. You know, if you go down, I go down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now I'm talking to the boss, I'm saying to myself, you know what, I didn't know what was going on. I was completely oblivious to what happened. I was the victim in all of this. Well. A few days later, the assistant manager calls my parents, and he's looking for me because he wants to call me in to talk. Well, as you could probably imagine, I didn't necessarily tell my parents the entire truth. I told them what I wanted them to understand and believe, it, you know, my little warped sense of thinking at that point. So my mom, when the, when the assistant manager called, she went off on him. And she let him have it, and she let him have it good. She was letting, I can't believe you would think that Matthew would do something like that. Matthew's a good boy. I know him. I raised him. That's uh, Eric you've got to pay attention for. He's the bad apple in all of this. You need to get rid of him. Well, what I didn't know about the whole situation is the fact that Eric had already gone in and confessed everything. Yeah, confessed everything. And at that point, again, and he didn't just confess what he did. He confessed like stuff he'd done years ago. He confessed about stuff that other people were doing as well. Let's just put it this way. Not only was I caught stealing, I was also caught lying as well. I'm pretty bad. So Eric calls me up and says, by the way, dude, I just want to let you know I went and told you know, our boss everything. I was like, oh. And he go, and just to let you know, I was in the room when he called your mom. 
and he was livid. <laughs> oh, good. So I goes, well, what's happening? I goes, are you, are you going to be, ter are we terminated? What's going on? He goes, well, I'm not terminated. <laughs> but uh, I don't know about you after that whole incident with your mom. <laughs> awesome. So I went in to the, to the office that, that, like 30 minutes later, and I, I pretty much took my apron because I assumed, okay, this is it. Obviously, again, I'm, I'm caught. I, I, I've obviously lied about it. I got caught doing that as well. I'm just, I'm, I'm a goner at this point. And then as we started talking, you know, my boss said, you know, a lot of the, the typical stuff a supervisor would say about, I'm really disappointed and I really thought highly of you and you've been such a good employee. Why would you do something like this? And I, I just, you know, I've answered the questions. I said, I don't know. I, I was stupid. I was dumb. I'm sorry about the situation with my mother. I obviously, as you know, I didn't tell her the truth either. Um, and at that point he goes, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to let you go. Like, you're not going to let me go? I'm, what, what do you mean? I, he goes, well, I'm going to keep you on. Okay? He goes, look, Matt, you've had a good work ethic since you've been here. It's nice to be able to walk in, see things done without me having to tell you. You've been a good employee up to this point. Okay? And that's what I like about you. There's a lot of, I said, so he really kind of brought out the good traits. It's what he's very happy with. Because I'll tell you one thing. You step one inch out of line, and you're done. Uh, I go, I completely understand that. I know. And then top of that, too, is the fact that he said that the store owner actually told him, he goes, look, if you catch Matt Lyon once, you fire him on the spot. You don't think twice about it. And again, I have been caught lying. I have been caught stealing. I have been caught covering it up. I was manipulating. I was playing Eric. I was playing the boss. I mean, all that stuff. Let's just say, I know that if you're a supervisor right now or a boss in any way, shape, or form, manage anybody, I'm pretty sure at this point you're thinking to yourself, yes, I totally should have been fired, and I agree with you 100%. You don't need to nod. I get it. All right? So this story actually kind of reminded me a little bit of the woman at the well. Now again, and we all know the story of the woman at the well. Here's a woman who's um, going in, the, in the, the hottest part of the day, like in Iowa summer pretty much, right? Especially what we've been dealing with lately. Here's a woman going to the well in the hottest part of the day to draw water simply because her reputation is so tarnished based on her past actions that she doesn't want to deal or socialize with anyone because people continue to cut her down all the time. So after a long day's journey, Jesus decides to stand to wait um, to rest at the well. And of course, we know the story goes, Jesus engages her in a conversation about spiritual water versus the living water. And we also talk about um, where's a good place to worship during that time as well. But after finally some, after more and more discussion, obviously Jesus reveals who he is. As it says in verse chapter 4, verse 24, and John says, Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. It goes on to say, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and made their way towards him. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Now again, it was actually at that very moment that Jesus revealed himself. And I'm sure there was more conversation that took place maybe we're not aware of, but her life was changed changed drastically that she actually at this point she didn't even care about the stigma that was on her at that point and that stigma that she'd been carrying all those years she and on top of that too, i mean she, she got so brave in fact that she went out and told others the same people i'm sure that were cutting her down and criticizing her talking behind her back and making her feel bad. she went over there and told these people about jesus and she was responsible for bringing people to jesus Somebody, you would probably say, definitely didn't deserve it. So I keep in mind, I guess, who did Jesus use that day to further his ministry? He used the woman at the well. Now I look at myself, so what was, the, what was the dramatic impact here? I think to myself back, think back to myself when it come to me being fired, almost fired, and I should have been. What was, the, what was the impact of my boss keeping me on? Well, number one, basically, let's just put it this way, I became the employee I knew I could be. I was very grateful for the fact that I'd been given a second chance, especially when I didn't deserve it. Number two, let's just say that I wasn't just on time to work, I was, I was early to work, all right? 
Let's just also say, too, that when, I, so, when overtime was needed, when I needed to come in on a day off, I came in. Because, again, I was so appreciative of what my boss had done for me. And finally, I would say that when my boss, when people would ridicule and cut him down, I would be the first one to actually stand up for him. Because back in high school, I mean, I was also the type of guy, too, that would be very, I mean, I, I didn't, I, all bosses were stupid. Any authority figure was dumb, as far as I was concerned. And I don't need to listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. I, I had the high school mentality, of course, you can see. I had the whole world figured out then, okay? But as far as, um, but back then, again, I mean, but I'll tell you one thing, when people cut him down and criticized him, I was probably the first to say, hey, you know what? He's actually a good guy, okay? And I would tell them my story a little bit. A lot of people knew about it already. But I would tell them my story, and they'd say, they, okay, and that could actually change my, so again, I actually, I put him more in a positive light because I, I was just happy for the fact that he saw something in me that was, worth, that was valuable and that was worth keeping around. Jesus saw the same thing in this woman at the well. He didn't sit there and focus on the fact that she'd had this terrible, I am said her reputation was more or less living with men and obviously not being married. And of course, that was a huge problem back then. Okay, and of course, very looked down upon. Of course, many, many people criticized this woman and her reputation as a result. But Jesus wasn't looking at that. He was looking at the positive things she could do. Obviously, this woman had a gift of bringing people to Jesus. And you know what? Jesus tapped into that at the well. He looked at the good qualities that was in her. And I think a lot of times, and I was talking to some people after my last, last time I gave this sermon, is the fact that I just really feel sometimes that, you know, we're always so concerned about, obviously, we need to deal with sin. I get that. And we need to, we need to um, work on whatever internally that we're struggling with, things that are drawing us away from God, things that are bringing us down. But, but let's not forget the other side of it, too, that God still knows that the good that's in us as well and wants to draw that out of us. Here's a woman with the well, as you would say, most people back then would say, she has no right to do ministry based on her reputation. Jesus thought differently, and he used her for ministry regardless of her past. So here's what I want. I want to end with this pretty much. Jesus knows the sin that lurks in our hearts, and he does know the sin that lurks in our minds as well. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to be misunderstood here. We need to deal with that, and you do need to confront it. However, don't forget, just as Jesus is aware of our struggles, he's also aware that there's good that exists within us, within you, within me. You can never think that you've done something so destructive or that you've been doing something so wrong all these years. Maybe you're not walking the path, the, the correct path. But keep in mind that Jesus wants to use you for something that's even bigger than yourself. And even if you don't feel like you're walking hand in hand with God, he's there ready to use you for his ministry regardless of where you feel like you are in your relationship with him. And perhaps, again, just like the one with the well, and let me just say, perhaps, let's think about this. Let's think about the people that he used back then for his ministry. Moses, a gentleman who killed an Egyptian. We think about David, who was, uh, who was also uh, a murderer and an adulterer as well. Let's also consider uh, Paul, for example, who went out killing Christians. Again, these were not the people that I would say that had a great reputation and made a lot of good, wise choices. Yet yeah, this is the people that Jesus used because... He saw the good in them. With that being said, Jesus didn't discard these people because of their tarnished past. Therefore, remember, and this is why I want you to leave with today, he won't discard you either. Can you take a moment, please, and pray with me?